Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're going to be going over top five <sighs> science champions in the game. And I think out of all the ones you want to do, this is going to be the most, like, controversial one. Or uh, controversial. So, like, if you have a different opinion than me, which you might have, you probably will have, you don't need to dislike it and, like, write a hate comment. Just, like, ex you can have a different opinion. This is my opinion. So, yeah, don't kill me, because I know this fifth option for number five is already going to piss some people off. But for number five, we have Void, okay? And Void, he's a really good character, like, really good. My sixth star isn't Awakened, but if I get him Awakened, I would probably take Nuring, too. So, just know, everyone on this list is, like, insane characters. So, it's, like, it's not, like, just because he's in fifth, he's bad. But Void... This guy, basically, he's insane because you never, like, actually have to touch the opponent. You just get, like, um, debuffs build up with Fear of the Void. And once you get all your six debuffs, um, you know, Fear of the Void activates if you have him awakened, which is one thing. You need him to have him awakened to be pretty good at a decently high sig level. And he has three debuffs he'll put on you. He's also um, immune to Cinerate debuffs. Uh, so, yeah, that's cool. So, the agility debuff they put on him. And each debuff you have does damage over time, so he just is a crazy damage over time character. So this is, you get max stacks of two for all of them. Agility and fatigue aren't that important, but the good ones are the petrifies. And once you have Fear of the Void active and a petrify, it'll start reversing healing and power gain. So um, so each one is reduces opponent's regen and power gain by a flat 50%. So say you get one petrify on the opponent, 50% regen and power gain, like passive power gain, so against like Hyperion, he's really good. Um, and then you get a second one, then they have no, then the healing is completely blocked, and so is the power um, gain from like a Hyperion with this power gain and Arcus, Vision Arcus. But then once you get Fear of the Void, once you get all the debuffs together and it comes into one, and then you get another Petrify debuff, then it starts to go negative, so it's like negative 50%. So then they start reversing healing and reversing power gain. So, pretty much, once you get this guy built up, he's a crazy damage over time beast who just is insane for any heal, healing or um, power gain. Like, it's in, like, power gain fights. And he also, one interesting thing is he has one of the biggest health pools, in, like, in the game. Like, my rank 1 has 30,000, which is pretty crazy. The only thing, the only reason I'm putting him down this so low is the other characters are pretty much better than him, in my opinion. And I run Suicide, so I might be hesitant to rank this guy up even if I awaken him but yeah so in fourth place this one is gonna piss off like anyone who loves using this character but <laughs> so don't don't kill me just let me explain myself number four is Quake Quake could easily be number one in the science class if you're insane with her you've mastered her perfect never get hit but the problem with Quake for me is the other three characters can pretty much out damage her I'd say and her, like, use in endgame content is... She can still be used in endgame content. She actually is really well in endgame content. Works really well. But, like, that's if you play it perfectly. And this character... She's not super hard to learn, but, like... She's not as fun, per se. Like, most people don't find fun playing her. Because you're just heaving in the corner. But she's definitely one of the best characters in-game, I'd say. Because just for her one ability... The fact that you hold the heavy attacks... The opponent can pretty much like never hit you on it. Like they can pretty much just never land a hit on you. And being able to not touch the opponent ever is insanely useful for plenty of scenarios. And once you sh um, hold in or heavy, her concussion is active. So they have 100% ability accuracy reduction, I think, doing that. Yeah, it reduces ability accuracy by 100%. And what makes her so good is you never have to touch the opponent. So that's already like electro, like. I, I, there's probably a whole bunch of other counters I can't think of right now. There's a whole bunch of counters. You never have to touch the opponent. Um, and then, by also not ever touching the opponent, they never gain power. So she's insane for, like, magics. And, yeah. So now we move on to number three in our list. This guy was not going to be on the top five list. But then, like, a whole bunch of gameplay came out proving he was way better than he is, thanks to, like, legacy and stuff. But then, another reason I put him up high is higher than Quake is... I base, like, the value of a character on, like, how well they do in endgame content. And for someone like Human Torch, the endgame content right now is Abyss of Legends, and this guy is 
literally killing it right now. He is um, a cold snap and frostbite immune, incinerate immune. But that's not pretty, pretty much not why he's like the best right now. He's insane because in the abyss right now, there's a lot of um, healing fights, like fights with a like, crazy healing, and his heal reversal like potential is so high that right now I place him above like Void and Quake and a bunch of other science characters because for end game content right now he's in like every team for Abyss and he's insane. His damage over time is crazy. He's he can't be missed so characters like Darkhawk and they go invisible or whatever. He's in, he's like the only counter I think for the Abyss Deadpool and you can one shot Darkhawk, Old Man Logan. He's basically a mystic slain beast and Human Torch he also is getting a buff, which makes his um, temperature or like heavy, like faster, and that's gonna help him a little bit. And yeah, overall he's just an insane character. Like this guy, if I get him as a five or six star, since the abyss came out, people are gonna start realizing his value and ranking him up way higher than he was. Like he might even go in like beyond god tier for like certain tier lists and stuff. Number two, we got a character. Uh, I've been wanting to rank up for a while, but I'm kind of like, don't have the six stones and kind of lazy, but Thing. Thing is a beast. Wait, I did not mean to click rank up. I'm going to click information. Thing, this guy's insane. His damage, people think even without the um, synergies, his damage isn't high. That's not true. This guy's damage is insane either way. You just got to build him up. It might take a little bit longer, but his damage is not crazy. But what makes Thing insane for me is when I've seen him at like... Well, one weakness is he needs to, ideally, to use an endgame content and be awakened and, like, take the SIG 200 because his protection mechanic is literally insane. This guy's protection can be triggered off of, like, blocks hit, block, blocked hits in 6.3. So, like, if you watch Thin gameplay in Act 6, he it's actually hard to kill him. Like, to get him low, it's hard because the protection keeps triggering. He's taking, like, no damage. He's in, he's bleed and shock immune, and nullify immune. And the nullify immune, when I first read it, I thought it'd be kind of useless. But honestly, where is it? Immune to armor, armor shatter, armor break, nullify, stagger, and fate seal. I thought that was useless when I first read it, but turns out the buffet node, he's a, he's completely immune to that node. Didn't know that until recently. I was like, oh, can't be nullified. So the buffet node doesn't work in him. So he's crazy for that. And overall, Thing is just a beast. He's also, like, a tank in Prestige, I'm pretty sure. Like, he's, like, really high up there. But just the ability to, like, not take any damage and to hit super hard and be bleed, shock, and, like, nullify me, and he, he's insane. Thing, one of the best characters in the game, in my opinion. And finally, for the number one spot, I mean, you probably guessed it if you haven't seen it by now, but Captain America Infinity War. This guy is a beast. But the, I'd say the only downfall for him is if you want your utility side of him, you need to be, like, super high sig, like, maxed out, ideally. I have mine at 160-ish, but 85% for his debuffs and all that, it's high enough for me. I mean, I don't have any six turns to put him, but what makes this guy insane? His damage, the fact that every time he parries is perfect, it's always zero, which in, like, 6.3, when they hit super hard to the block, it's really great. He's an insane... Um, power gain and heal counter with his signature ability with the petrifies every time he parries if he has a tech on his team there's a chance to place a 25 percent petrified debuff on the opponent for 10 seconds so you mix this with the um what's the mastery called what is it? despair mastery and this guy when he places all his debuffs like when you have a team built around him he like their the heal reversal is insane um he never has to trigger buffs because you can just parry heavy constantly. So that's really insane for like, I love bringing him in to like 500,000 health, Dormammu's in 6.3. You just parry heavy, parry heavy, always zero damage. You never have to like back up and gain like the um, dexterity buff. So like, he's insane. Never has to create any buffs. So he's really good for Dormammu's, really good for buffet nodes. Like this guy, and you also, when he has his persistent charges or whatever they're called, the kinetic potentials every time you parry you get one and they go up to five max and when you heavy with these you get like a massive fury so you just parry heavy constantly you're normally at five 
potentials. You launch this special too, it can crit for over like 100,000 damage. He's insane. And when you have a, a kinetic potential up, you are like, you can knock through unstoppable. So say you're fighting a, an unstoppable Colossus, you have a kinetic charge. You just punch him and the unstoppable goes away. I mean, for unstoppable um, buffs, not passes, but he's insane. Like, you're versing a Annihilus, a massive Annihilus. You hit Annihilus once with the connect potential and the um, the mystic or the cosmic wand or power thing that he has goes away so you won't be able to trigger unstoppable against you anymore. Captain America is insane. Like, he is. And you can also be fully debuff immune if you build him with a skill character, um, with the skill. Whenever a debuff is gained, it'll take away one kinetic uh, potential to purify it. So you can do this like play it slowly. And if there's like a biohazard lane and you like need to use him, you can parry like a few times, get a few kinetic potentials, and just heavy. And the fights they would seem like it'd be slow doing that, but his damage is heavy. They're so strong. I mean, it's really not. He can one shot the six point two sinister boss. His block proficiency alone. Even like unawakened, I would still rank five him just for that and the damage for like the champion boss. The final ten percent, you can just block it. You don't even have to use skill. It's like his block efficiency is so strong. At everything about this character, I just love. He's suicide friendly because really after like one special two, they're normally dead. So yeah, you guys tell me your list. I mean, there's probably gonna be a lot of people disagreeing and agreeing with each other in the comments, but. And an honorable mention, I'd say, is She-Hulk. She-Hulk, I was debating putting her as number five over Void, but, eh, I don't know. She's, like, a really close sixth place contender. Like, she's just on Void's ass, but I know people put Void higher on the tier list, but I just don't value him as much because I run suicides, and he's just not as fun for me. But I do recognize he's a really good character. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Get a like, comment, subscribe. Comment. Ooh, sorry. I burped. Comment down your list down below of what you what order you would have put it in. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Get a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.